All right, so this is section 12.2. All right, so in your flip book, um, before, we, before we talk about what we're going to talk about today, um, the very first thing when you, open up your, when you open up your book, there's a circle, and on, b below it it says V is the center of the circle. What that, is, what that piece there is there for is to remind us that the measure of an arc is the same as the measure of its central angle. So what you want to write in there is the measure of angle ABC, which is written in there, equals the measure of arc AC. It says the measure of angle ABC equals, and you're going to write the measure of arc AC. And down below it, it says the measure of arc AC equals and you write the measure of angle ABC. The arc and the central angle are the same. And we talked about that um, when we talked about areas of circles. So the central angle and the arc are the same. All right, so let's talk about chords. I'm going to draw a picture here. So this, does, this is not in your flip book. So a chord is a segment that is in the circle. So I'm going to draw in a couple of radii. And then I'm going to connect the ends of the radii. So we talked about that, that section of a circle before. I'm going to call that point A and that point B. We call segment AB. A chord. The endpoints are on the circle. So a chord is just a segment that's inside a circle. Angle AOB is its central angle. And we say that arc AB is angle AOB AOB's chord. And what we wrote in our flip book is the measure of angle AOB equals the measure of arc AB. The central angle and the chord, central angle and the arc have the same measure. And we just wrote it both directions. The measure of the arc is equal to the measure of the angle. The measure of the angle is equal to the measure of the arc. <coughs> All right, so everything that we're going to talk about today for this first part of the lesson has to do with how chords and angles are related to each other. Different chords and different angles in a circle are related to each other. Is everybody good with what a chord is? Okay. So we want to know how angles and arcs are related. And in all of these things that we talk about today, where I'm going to say in a circle, we could also say in two congruent circles. So in a circle, congruent central angles have congruent arcs. And 
congruent arcs have congruent central angles. So let's draw a picture here. And I'm going to draw some central angles. <coughs> and I'm going to call this A, B, C, and D. The center of the circle is O. We're going to say um, if angle A, OB is congruent to angle COD. That means that arc AB is congruent to arc CD. And it works both ways. So I'm going to draw my arrow both ways. If the angles are congruent, the arcs are congruent. If the arcs are congruent, then the angles are congruent. And we can mark these if we want it. So I'll mark my angles congruent. Make that a little less messy. There we go. And that tells us that the arcs are congruent. So congruent angles have congruent arcs. Congruent arcs have congruent angles. Well, now we want to know how the chords and the angles are related. And it's just like we would expect in a circle or in two congruent circles. congruent central angles have congruent chords. And works the other way, congruent chords have congruent angles. And I'm talking about the central angle. So our picture here is almost the same as the last one but we're going to include the chords this time. So if I have my central angle there, and I'll draw another central angle, and we include the chords. So what we're saying is if angle AOB is congruent to angle COD, that means that segment AB, the chord, is congruent to segment CD. And it works both directions. The angles are congruent, the chords are congruent. If the chords are congruent, then the angles are congruent. So we can mark, make the same, same kind of marks that we did on the last one. Those angles congruent mean that these chords are congruent. And this would be an easy proof to do. Our two radii are congruent, so we'd have side angle side, side angle side. And then we use CPCTC. All right, we're good there. We can also talk about the relationship between chords and arcs. So we have all these things that are related to each other. The angles, the arcs, and the chords. They're all, they're all related to each other. So the chords and arcs. And we're going to say it, this is going to be exactly like you would expect. If the chords are congruent, the arcs are congruent. And if the arcs are congruent, the chords are congruent. So in a circle. This also works in two congruent circles. Congruent chords 
have congruent arcs. And congruent arcs have con congruent cores. So our picture here, a little bit different than before because we don't need our central angle now. I just need two cords. And I'll call this A, B, and C, D. And that's the center of the circle. Um, a, B being congruent to C, D, segment C, D, tells us that arc AB is congruent to arc CD and it works both ways. The chords are congruent, the arcs are congruent, if the arcs are congruent then the chords are congruent. So we have this kind of three-way relationship going on between these things, between the angle, the chord, the arc, and, and now they're all related. All right, and if we wanted to mark this, I could say those are congruent, the segments are congruent, so the arcs are congruent. Questions? All right, let's look at an example. I'm going to draw a picture, and let's, I want to see what else we can figure out. So we're going to be given some information. Here's my circle, and I'm going to draw in a couple diameters. And a couple of chords. And I'm going to say that segment AB is congruent to segment DC. So let me mark that. So those two chords are congruent. If we know that those two segments are congruent, those two chords are congruent, what else can we figure out? This is the kind of thing that you're going to need to do on your test and on your quiz. Given some piece of information, what other piece of information that you, can you figure out that will end up helping you solve the problem? You need to solve? Any ideas? Yeah? The angles are congruent. If the, chords, if the chords are congruent, then the angles are congruent. So we can say angle uh, DOC, DOC, is congruent to angle AOB. So we know those central angles have to be congruent. What else can we figure out? The arcs have to be congruent also. So arc DC has to be congruent to arc AB. So we have those congruent to each other. Anything else? Well, don't we have some other? Those are those, that's pretty good. For, those are the things we can figure out almost immediately. Don't we have some other angles that are congruent? Aren't these two angles kind of on the other side of our, of our center here? Aren't those congruent? They're vertical angles. So then we know that arc CB C, 
and arc AD are congruent. So we can figure that out. So there's lots of information just by give, given, being given one pair of angles, lots of information that we can figure out from there. All right. Questions so far? Um, well, the chords have a special relationship with the center of the circle also. So let's talk about the, that relationship. We're going to talk about chords and centers. So in a circle, chords equidistant from the center are congruent. And the converse is also true. And um, congruent chords are the same distance from the center. So if we know two chords are the same distance from the center, they're congruent. If we know two chords are congruent, that tells us they're the same distance from the center. So let's draw a picture here. Here are a couple of chords. The distance from the center, remember our distance we measure perpendicularly. And I'll call this A, B, C, D. <clears throat> and this is O. And I'll po call this point on segment CD where the radius meets it uh, E. And this one F on the other set on the other chord. And this is if the distance O E equals the distance EF. Then segment CD is congruent to segment AB. And why don't I do this like I did before? I'm going to write an arrow. If the distance from O to E is the same as the distance from E to F, that means that the two segments are congruent, and it works the other direction as well. If the two segments are congruent, then those two distances are the same. And remember, when we put two points without any, any, no, any symbols over the top, that's telling us about distance. All right, questions there? Chords have a special relationship with diameters also. So in a circle, if a diameter is perpendicular to a chord, then it bisects the chord.
and its arc. And this works the other way around as well. If uh, a diameter bisects a chord, then it's perpendicular to the chord. So let's draw a picture for that. Here is our circle. Here is a diameter. And here is a chord. We're saying the diameter is perpendicular to the chord, and it bisects the chord. So I'll call the diameter segment AB, the chord segment CD. So we're saying that AB is perpendicular to CD and segment AB bisects segment CD. All right, questions there. OK, let's look at a couple of examples. These are all the, the different relationships that we're going to talk about. Let's look at a couple of examples. Do I have examples here? So here's my first circle. I'm going to draw in a chord here. And we're going to say that chord length is 14. That's a radius. The little segment from the center to the chord is three units. And we want to find R. We want to find the radius. Well, the first thing we can figure out is because this little segment from the center to the chord is perpendicular to that chord, what, what, is it, what else does it do to that chord? perpendicular and it this is a piece of a diameter so if a diameter is perpendicular to a chord then it also bisects the chord so we know that this distance is 7 What are we going to do to find that radius? We know that all radii are congruent. What was the other piece of advice I gave us on Friday? When in doubt? Anybody remember? Yes? Another radius. Draw another radius. Let's draw a radius in a convenient location. What would be a convenient location to draw another radius? In the circle. In, in, in the circle. It would have to be in the circle, yes. How would, what's, what would be convenient for our problem? Yeah. 
how about one that makes a triangle here? That is also the radius. So I draw the, the radius that connects the center to the edge, end of the chord. Well, now I have a nice right triangle. I can use a Pythagorean theorem. The hypotenuse is the radius. So I get 3 squared plus 7 squared equals r squared. So 9 plus 49 equals r squared. r squared is 58. Take the square root, both sides. And to the nearest tenth, r would be about 7.6. All right, let's look at one more example. Questions, questions on this one before we move on? Very typical kind of problem from chapter 12. Would you agree, Ms. Lindgren? Uh, pretty, pretty typical. Very typical. Similar setup, but we're given slightly different piece of information. So here's a chord. Let me undo the, I want that different color. There we go. And there's a segment from the center that's perpendicular to that chord. We're going to call that Y. And there's that segment. I'm going to call that 15. And I'm going to say this is 11. So that's, let me make it clear here, 11. And we want to find Y. And I'm going to, I know I drew it in already, but I'm going to do this just to slightly set it up a little bit differently. 11 and 11. So we know those two pieces, those two halves, two portions of the chord are each 11. So what we could figure out in that situation, since the chord is bisected by this segment that's a portion of the diameter, we would be able to figure out that this is a 90 degree angle. All right, so now what are we going to do to solve that problem? So let's draw in another radius in a convenient location. Where in the circle would be a convenient location to draw the radius? Make a triangle. We turn circle problems into triangle problems. That's what we do often in math. Make a triangle. That is also 15 because all radii are congruent. And now we can use a Pythagorean theorem. This time we have the hypotenuse. So we're going to say y squared plus 11 squared equals 15 squared. So y squared plus 121 equals 1, sorry, 225. Subtract 121. y squared equals 104. Take the square root of both sides. And y is going to be, what's it going to be close to? It's got to be close to 10 because 104 is close to 100. Comes out to be rounded to the 10th, 10.2. Another very typical problem in chapter 12. All right, questions there? Okay. Homework is page 777. Six or 16 even. 18. 
24, and then 30 through 34 even. 